weavers I do already have a video on this very same topic I'm going to be showing you the same techniques today but the reason that I've made another video is that the last one was a little unclear I think what happened was I had just got my new camera at the time and I was still figuring out all of the settings it was a little bit different to the last camera that I had been using and I think that the footage was just a little bit blurry and not as in focus as it could have been so I thought I'd give it another shot to make it super clear some of you have given me feedback that it's just not quite clear enough for you and I totally understand that so thank you for that feedback helps me to make better videos today's video is brought to you by the online weaving school with over 50 classes available there really is something for every weaver of every level you can choose from a membership or a single class purchase Come on over and find out why over 5,000 weavers are already registered. When you visit the weaving school, you're not just visiting an education center, you are visiting a community. I hope you can come and join us today. This project is from my new overshot on a rigid heddle loom class. You will definitely want to check that out. It is coming out this week. I'll give you a link to that down below. And because you're watching this video, that link will be a discount link, especially for you. What I've done is I've finished weaving my beautiful overshot pattern and I've given a, a little area of plain weave just to finish it off and because that makes it a really nice base for hem stitching on. Okay so I finished off my weft on the right hand side because I am right handed and I want to actually do my hem stitch from the right side. So I'm still attached with my weft yarn that I finished off with and I'm going to make about four lengths the width of my warp here so one two three roughly four lengths I usually like to just do a little bit more I almost always have plenty so it's not too much of a concern but I'd rather have a little bit more than a little bit less I'm going to thread that up in my tapestry needle this tapestry needle is a bent tip tapestry needle. If you do a lot of hem stitching, this is an absolute game changer. So I'm gonna to link to that down below if you're interested. And as an added bonus, this one is gold, so I'm less likely to lose it. At least that's my theory. Okay, so I've got that threaded up with my weft and warp yarn the same color as the plain weave that I've just finished off and to start with I want to do a little lock stitch on the edge so I'm going to take the needle underneath the first warp thread which is actually my floating selvage and whenever I do floating selvages I include them in the hem stitch because I want them to go into the fringe and look like part of the whole piece so I've gone underneath the first warp thread I've got a little loop here and I'm going to take the needle through the loop pull 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 and then tighten and now I've got it kind of locked in place for this piece we're doing a 4-1 hem stitch so to me that means I'm doing four warp threads bunches of four warp threads and I'm going one weft thread deep so I've counted in those four warp threads right here and then I can see my first weft thread and I'm going to come up in the space on top of that or underneath that because we're kind of working backwards now because we're hem stitching the other end. Pull that through. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the start and this is where this bent tipped needle comes in so handy. I'm going to go underneath those four warp threads, pull through. I'm going to hold the loop or hold the end of the yarn so that it forms a loop right here. I want to hold on to that. And then I'm going to take my lovely gold needle through the middle of that. Okay, and then you can see the loop starting to pull up into those four bunched threads and I'm just going to tug that and pull it tight and that's my first hem stitch. Now I've got a big gap between this bunch and the next warp thread so I'm going to go down 
into the middle where that gap is. Pull that through. And then I can count off my next four. One, two, three, four. And then pop the needle through going on top or underneath that first weft thread there. Pull through. Make sure that this doesn't happen to you. you get, sometimes you get a little knot or a little bunch at the back of the work. It usually just pulls out and then you can pull it through. Okay, so I'm going to take my needle back to where I started. So this is where I came down in that gap. Back to there, underneath the four that I picked off. And then take that through, holding on to the loop. Okay, and then take my needle through the loop to lock that stitch in. Here comes the loop onto those warp threads and then I'm just going to tighten that up. Two, that's two we've done now. Down through the gap again. So it's to the left of the bunch that I've just made. Counting off another four. One, two, three, four. Those are my four warp threads. And then I've got to come in underneath that weft thread and pull through. Okay, go back to the start of those four threads. Now to speed it up a little bit, instead of doing it in two steps um, while you hold this yarn and make the loop, you can actually just make sure that that yarn sits on top of the gold needle. Also, it kind of scoops underneath. That means that you don't then have to hold the loop because the loop is naturally formed by that action. You see, there's the loop pull it up. So I'll do the next one a little bit faster. Um, there are more ways that you can speed this up too. So I'm counting off my next four, coming up underneath the first weft thread, pulling through, and then coming back to the start of the four, going underneath them, and then straight through that yarn. Go back again so you can see again. So I'm holding the yarn with my left hand and I'm going to scoop underneath it and then pull. Pull it up till it forms that little loop and then you can just be a little bit more careful about the placement and tug. Okay, so another way to speed up is once we've, when we go through the gap, instead of dropping the needle through the gap, I can actually scoop up the next four all in the same sort of movement. So if I count off the four, okay, so that I know that the four is there, separate them out, I can go straight underneath that weft thread as a sort of diagonal action. That takes another step out of the process. And this is where you start to find that it's actually really quick and easy to do this. Then I scoop back underneath those four, make sure that that left yarn goes under uh, goes over the gold needle and then pull through. Show you what that looks like without me talking about it, just the action. So it becomes pretty fast. And before you know it, you've got all these lovely little hem stitched bunches that make your piece look all that more professional. So if you need to go through the really slow steps again, go back to the start of the video where I start demonstrating the steps and go through those steps over and over until you've got it and then you can speed up. And we just continue like this right across the warp. 
If you're interested in knowing more about the Overshot class, it is a more of an advanced class. So if you are a beginner rigid head or weaver, it's not going to be so suitable for you, maybe later down the track. But if you've got a few projects under your belt already, and particularly if you have already done weaving with two heddles before, or if you have experimented with weaving, with making your rigid heddle loom into a multi-shaft loom, this class would be great for you. Now, if you're still interested in the class, but you don't feel like you have the amount of experience needed just yet, then you may want to consider doing my converting pattern drafts to a rigid heddle loom class. And I'll also leave a link for that down below. That gives you the sort of foundation for the ideas that are going to be presented in this class. We start out by weaving a beautiful little sampler of a, an overshot floral design. And then the class project is this really lovely scarf that I'm working on right here. Throughout the class, I give a lot of different options for threading your loom because there are several different ways of doing that and different methods may suit different people. I also provide a lot of PDFs for people who like to see the information written down as well as using a video to complete the steps. I also provide visual threading diagrams, which are really important for some people to be able to get the steps right in their head. This is a really fun way of weaving on a rigid head or loom. Normally for a floor loom or a multi-shaft loom, we would use four shafts and six treadles to do overshot on the rigid head or loom. For this class, we are using two heddles, a heddle rod and a pickup stick. The thing that's really wonderful about overshot is it almost feels like a magical weave as you're weaving it. You see this wonderful pattern appear very quickly before your eyes. And I remember the first time I wove overshot, it was almost like I couldn't believe what I was seeing in front of my eyes, that I was weaving this beautiful pattern. And that's just by following the steps, I knew that I could do that and it wasn't hard. It requires a bit of concentration, but it's not difficult. And my class gives you all the steps you need to get your loom set up and start weaving this beautiful weave. As I said, the class is due for release this week. It's fully closed captioned, and I think it'll be an excellent learning experience for so many rigid heddle weavers. Don't forget to check the link down below with a discount if you're interested. I've come to the end of the piece. I don't have an even number of warp threads to finish off with. So I did my last four and then I had two threads left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop those in together as a lock stitch. I'm going underneath them and I'm holding the loop and then putting the needle through the loop to lock that in. Okay, so that's pretty tight. This is this lock stitch I always do on the start and end of hem stitch, and I've never ever had a hem stitch come undone. Now we can start to needle weave in the tail that we've got left. Now we're not going to needle weave in this entire tail. That'd be crazy. We're just gonna do it for around an inch. And I'm just following the little weft threads and warp threads that I've got the interlacement of plain weave just going over under to settle that thread in that tail without it looking conspicuous.